This week on Channel 8 News, we learn about the Student Senate blood drive, how Northwest is handling the worst flu season in 10 years, and True Talk panelists Andy Campbell and Christopher Rausch discuss current national news. Welcome to Channel 8 News, I'm Andrew Benson. I'm Smith Fender. thank you for joining us. Last Monday, the nation celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day. The Northwest Campus held events throughout the week to recognize Martin Luther King Jr.'s accomplishments. The week events began on Monday with a peace brunch and a peace march. The Intercultural and International Center Northwest Dream Team asked people throughout campus to share their dreams for America in relation to justice and equality on Tuesday. On Wednesday, the Intercultural International Center hosted a video and discussion on the topic of post-traumatic slave syndrome. The annual unity celebration was held on Thursday to show unity among different people and cultures. Individuals, groups, and organizations performed acts to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. The week concluded with a late night social at the Rec Center hosted by the Intercultural International Center. Reporter Haley Hill attended Thursday's unity celebration to see the different performances. The Ron Houston Center hosted a unity celebration on January 24th in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Steve Bryant, Director of Intercultural Affairs, put on the event. The Unity Celebration tonight was kind of the fun, yet let's be soulful, get to know each other event for the week. We've had lots of educational events going on this week, and this is one that we want to give a chance for people to come out and see some great entertainment like we saw tonight. The open mic session included acts from singers, dancers, poets, and musicians from organizations around campus. Emily Hart shared the meaning behind her performance. Well, that was a river dance um, performed to the song Boomamon uh, by Celtic women. Um, it's kind of a mixture. It's an Irish kind of tap dance that, um, well, I think that originally it's kind of like a, almost a Native American dance where you're stomping down on the ground to like try and um, get the soil to go, but then it just became a cultural thing. And the night also included a slideshow that the Northwest Dream Team produced. Tuesday we had the Northwest Dream Team, which are wearing shirts like this, that traveled around all over campus and took pictures of people that listed out what their dream was for America or what their dream was for themselves. Overall, the event was a success with over 60 students in attendance. For KNWT, this has been Haley Hill. Thanks, Haley. This week, Student Senate is holding a three-day blood drive. The Student Senate is co-sponsoring the blood drive with the Community Blood Center to boost blood supplies in Northwest Missouri. According to the Community Blood Center, 580 blood donors are required every weekday to meet blood donation needs. The blood drive runs Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 11 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon in the Union Ballroom. This year, Northwest received a grant to assist student Grace Becker's plans for a community garden. The plan is to transform the in-ground gardens near the CIE into the People's Garden, a produce and sensory garden open to the public. The Missouri National Resources Conservation Service granted $50,000 to the project. The grant will help fund the, most of the building, construction materials. All produce grown in the People's Garden will be donated to the Maryville Ministry Center and Nottoway County Senior Center. Northwest Missouri State University's Madra Lear's Choral Ensemble was selected to perform at a Music Educators Conference for the second consecutive year. The ensemble was one of three college choirs in Missouri to perform at the annual Missouri Music Educators Association Conference in January. The Madra Lear's were selected based on recordings of the ensemble's performance, three, performing three musical selections from the 2011-2012 school year. When we come back, we talk to True Talk panelists Andy Campbell and Christopher Rausch about national news, learn about Teens for Jeans, and a new art exhibit is showcased in the Olive de Luce Gallery. All that and more, stay tuned.
welcome back to Channel 8 News. Joining us are True Talk panelists Andy Campbell and Christopher Rausch. In this segment, we break down national news and the analysis will give their views on current events. Chris, what is your opinion on gun control, you know, with all the new laws coming out and stuff? What's your opinion kind of on the whole situation? I think there needs to be a little bit of gun control. You're looking towards the semi-automatics, but also at the same time there's hunting semi-automatics out there, so you really have to make it very clear what you want to control. At the same time, these mass shootings are going to happen regardless of what we do because people are still going to get their hands on these things and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. All right. And Andy, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, it's my right to have a gun. What's kind of your opinion on that? I completely agree that every person has their right to own a gun. Um, and I think that if you really look at what Obama's trying to do here is he's not trying to take your gun away. What he's trying to do is he's trying to make it more difficult for somebody who shouldn't have a gun to get their hands on a gun. And he's also trying to place a ban on military weapons, which I don't think anybody really has business owning in the first place. And now a lot of people are saying, you know, well, let's make marijuana and all these other drugs illegal. Oh, wait, they already are, and they're on the street like crazy. What's, mm -hmm. What are your, your response you know, to that? I know that a huge argument right now with gun control is, you know, like Chris said, even if we do put bans on weapons, it's still going to happen anyway. And I agree with that to a certain extent, but if this in any way shocks the system that people are using to get their hands on weapons or it makes it more difficult for them so somebody that would have done a school shooting otherwise suddenly doesn't because they couldn't get their hand on a weapon and we've saved lives because of that then I feel like we have an obligation to at least try. Okay now Chris, um, you know the military uses these types of guns and when you're in the military a lot of times you take home like you get to keep those guns so you know people in the military sometimes go crazy and whatever what are they going to do about that? I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Most of them, when they come back from serving overseas or wherever they're serving at, you take them away from them. But after all their training, they have the guns. You really can't do that after all they've done for the country. But like you said, they come back, something wrong from serving overseas or something happens to them, that could happen. Also, Andy, what you said about making it harder for them to get a hold of it. Some of these guys or whoever does it plan this out for weeks, months at a time, like the Aurora, Colorado case, he would plan that out for months at a time. He got his hands on the guns over a period of time and he had this planned out so easily they could plan this for a period of time, figure out how they're going to get them even though they're illegal. Okay, and you know a lot of people will argue with the black markets that you know they're going to be selling these guns anyway so it, if you really want to get one it's not going to be that hard so what's kind of your defense I guess in that? You know people say that and it's the same thing with drugs right now people that really want them do get their hands on them but at the same time that doesn't mean that we should go legalize cocaine and legalize you know all different kinds of drugs just because people can still get their hands on them what this will do is at least it'll make it more difficult for people that shouldn't have a gun um, to get their hands on it so that maybe some of the mass shootings you know, at least die a little bit, they kind of dwindle out a little bit so that then we can start fixing society in that way. Okay, and with this last shooting in Connecticut, you know, they said that they used an A-15 or whatever it was um, t in the school, but it turned out it was really in his car, and um, they said that it turns out that he might have just used handguns to do all that, so do you think they should take away handguns as well, or what are, what are we going to do about that? I, um, you know, this is something that I've always said. I've always had an issue with handguns. I understand that that's people's right to own a handgun, and so no, you can't take that away from them. Um, that would be infringing upon our constitutional rights, but um, a handgun was solely designed to be pointed at a human being and shot, not at anything else. It was designed for humans to shoot other humans with. Um, so me personally, I've always had an issue with handguns, but I don't think that he will ever get anything passed that can take away a handgun from someone. Okay, and what's your kind of point in that, Chris? I, I see handguns as people go out target practicing. Like you said, they're used to shoot other people. At Sometimes they're used for target practice, but at the same time, if someone comes into your house with a loaded gun coming to rob you, what, you're not going to have a, if you have a handgun that he takes it away from you, you can't defend yourself. He has a gun. I, I mean, there's nothing you can do unless you have something to protect yourself with. Okay, so do you think that if people get permits to be able to have these machine guns wherever that they should be legal, or should they just be completely taken out? Machine guns are a different story because I don't think those should be as open for people to buy. I mean, there, that has to be a special circumstance. Like some hunting rifles are semi-automatic. They go several rounds a second, everything like that. But it's just, I guess, the scenario that's in. And what about? Um, I personally think that all military weapons should be taken off the market for people to be able to go and purchase. 
Um, I just find it disturbing for myself that if I really wanted to and if I was, you know, a little crazy and insane, um, I could go to Walmart right now and pick up a machine gun, a military weapon, and use it however I please. Okay. And, okay, so when you have a family someday, do you think that you would want to have a gun in your possession just in case somebody comes in with one themselves? Um, I was raised in a gunless family and I don't think that I will ever have a gun um, for protection. I know of other ways to protect my family. Um, I can't live with myself with the thought that my child could find that gun potentially and point it at themselves, um, whether on purpose or on accident. So. Thanks Andy and Chris for joining us. Channel 8 News will be right back. Welcome back to Channel 8 News. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention has called this flu season to be the worst in the past 10 years. Over 129.4 million doses of the flu vaccine have been distributed. The Northwest Campus recently gave out over 200 flu shots to students in the community. Channel 8 News reporter Stephanie Crabtree talked to the Wellness Center about how the Northwest Campus is helping to protect students and staff from catching the flu. Thank you, Sam. This semester has been an intense flu season, not only for students, but teachers as well. I talked to Judy Fru, a nurse practitioner at the Wellness Center, about how it has affected our university. Well, since the semester started, we've seen quite a few. Either they've been actually positive for the flu or they've had uh, influenza-like illness, which is similar to the flu. We don't necessarily test everyone. We will if they request it. We have sent some into the state. Uh, otherwise, we do some in-house testing for it. Some of the symptoms with the flu that we're seeing, usually it's a sudden onset. Um, so somebody can usually tell us when they started feeling bad. Um, usually you'll have a, a fair fever, like 100, 101, something like that. So pretty high fever for maybe two or three days. Pretty achy, lots of fatigue. Um, sometimes that congestion, the sore throat, those are pretty minor sometimes that we see. Occasionally we'll see some nausea and vomiting with that, but not real common. CDC does still recommend those that haven't got the flu shot to go ahead and get it, but do keep in mind it takes about two weeks to build the antibodies up against the flu. So once you get the shot, if you get exposed in that two week period, you could still get the flu. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can either call the Wellness Center or schedule one online. This has been Stephanie Crabtree with Channel 8 News. Thank you, Stephanie. Last week, Teens for Jeans was held. Teens for Jeans is an organization that collects jeans for homeless teens in need. Over 1.7 million teens are homeless, and the number one item they request from shelters is a pair of jeans. Individuals were able to drop off jeans no longer needed. If you are interested in helping Teens for Jeans, visit www.dosomething.org backslash Teens for Jeans. If you are interested in art, the work of mixed media artist, calligrapher, and abstract painter John Y. Chang will be showcased in Northwest's newest art exhibit. The showcase entitled Encounters of Space opens this Monday with a lecture and reception at 7 in the evening at Charles Johnson Theater. The exhibit continues through Friday, March 8th and is free and open to the public. 
Valentine's Day is quickly approaching and student media is sponsoring Love and Mayhem. This Monday and Thursday, come to the Union to record messages of love or hate on camera. The Love and Mayhem event will be set up in the, on the second floor of the Union from 11 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. Your message will air this the week of Valentine's Day on KWT and X106. That's all the time we have for this week. Be sure to watch Channel 8 News every Monday through Thursday evening at 6.30. If you have any questions or concerns, look us up on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash KWT8. Up next is Story Behind the Story. I'm Andrew Benson. I'm Samantha Fender. Have a good night.